Hello, welcome to this week's episode. My name is Andrew Ball and I'm going to be your host as we talk fashion trend forecasting. This episode first went out live in my Facebook group, Fashion Brand Builders. You're welcome to come and join us. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about all about predicting your fashion future, what's going to be hot, what you need to stock, how much you need to stock. I'm going to be talking with a uh, trending expert, Samuel Bonsu from thatguybonds.com. And I think if you want to try and learn the art of fashion forecasting, then this episode is a great place to start. So please stay tuned. And if you enjoy the episode, please like and subscribe. Hi, Sam. Hello. All right. How is everybody? I'm good, I'm good thanks. I hope everyone <laughs> else is too. If you want to... Uh, then, like I said, if you've got any questions for Sam, please put them on. We'll, we'll get to them. So, um, what is fashion trend forecasting, Sam? So it's looking at it's almost looking at what is on the horizon. What is going to be the next big thing that you need to buy into, or or develop within your range to make sure that you are ahead of the game. And that is looking at what is going down the runway, what is going on in popular culture, and then looking at what are the key themes and the key trends within that, and then ex- and then going out and committing to either developing that if you are developing your own particular brand, or going out and making sure that you're procuring those styles and those key pieces from third party brands if you're buy if you're if you're buy if you're buying wholesale. But manage making sure that you manage your your cash flow and your open to buy so that you don't then kind of get over committed and over over stung. And I've got stories of how many times we've gone over bullish on particular areas and then been stung. But it's a case of knowing that being stung isn't the end of the world. Okay. So I just wanna just this like I think we should get on to in 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 a minute get on yeah. to why you should do it in a bit more yeah. detail. But it's interesting. I hadn't really personally thought about actually. There's two different kind of um, stakeholders in the forecasting. Mm-hmm. The fact that you've got the 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 people, the fashion brands who are making the clothing, yeah, um, and people who are stocking it as well. So there's actually two. You've got two parties in this who both are equally invested in being on trend for that particular um, moment. Yeah, that, that there is. And what you've always kind of got, and depending on the relationship between the, almost the retailer and their head office function and the brand's function, is that collaborative field to kind of guide brands to make sure that they don't, A, go down a tangent that is completely off kilter from the mainstream, but still keeping their USP, but also you're then not overexposing yourself in terms of stock stock uh, procurement and then looking to try and drive it through either through sale or promotional activity which is then only detrimentally going to detriment your your brand as you're going to train your customer a particular way but then also detriment that brand because you're then going to limit then going forward the spend and budget that they will be exposing which will cut to call which will cut into their their billable receipts as wholesale managers will be working towards kpis yeah, so I suppose what we're talking about is with the trend forecasting allows us to get the right products on the shelf, and that's yeah. good, that's good news for both parties, the pe- the people making the clothes and the, and the retailers as well. From your perspective, obviously, yeah. if, you're, if you're selling online as an e-commerce store, then you're 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 doing both parts of that. Exactly. But it's really important to, I guess, why it's important is uh, because you want to have the right stock not makes not make clothing that people don't want and end up with stock that doesn't sell and then exactly and then you know and you could end up with uh the retailer can end up buying loads of stock which just doesn't go anywhere and yeah it's just not good good news so if move, moving forward with with this we know that forecasting is important for stock and cash control cash control mm-hmm. Um, what uh, what goes into a fashion forecast report? You know, if you, if you're if because you're very experienced in this area and you've been doing this for <laughs> for many years, right? If yeah. you're compiling a report for someone, what would go into that report? What information would they have? Um, you break it down to almost the smallest level of detail, breaking it down by size, skew, color, sky, size, skew, which is the individual code of the item so blue t-shirt red t-shirt um brand size sizing sizing curve what was the performance in terms of the sales for the previous season 
And if you break down the season into 26, 26 week chunks, it roughly it doesn't align because the seasons have slightly shifted with retailers moving their sale periods. Um, what was the stock procurement and then what was the sell through, which then allows you to kind of gauge and benchmark where your performance is. Then you then need almost the qualitative data of what is the buzz around that particular brand? What was their, what was their catwalk show? And what are, what, what is your, what is your buying team or your design team saying about those particular key pieces or trends that are going on? Because it might be the case that they may have had a horrendous couple of seasons, but out of nowhere, they bounced back. Take, for example, the resurgence of Louis Vuitton, which kind of has ticked along selling their monogram bags. But since now they've decided to go down a more urban and, and urban, urban route with their collaboration with Supreme and then their new creative director, you'll see that there'll be a massive re research, particularly in the big department stores of, of going into those brands because the hype and the buzz around them is going to translate not only within fashion world, but also out to the consumer, which will then garner more traction. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So it's, it's, it's looking at the data, but it's also, it's also getting for, it's quite, an, it's like a lot of decisions, isn't it? You, you, mm -hmm. you know, you, you base it on the data, but there's also a bit of gut and a feel and a feel for what's happening out there. And you can feel the noise and how much talk is about something. Um, as, as, so I, 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 something had just occurred to me. So I guess if we were just looking at this, a really basic thing, let's say I just mm -hmm. sold denim jeans. Yes. Right, right. Just like as a yeah. really, I know that's not as cool and trendy as Louis mm -hmm. Vuitton. But what you're really talking about is for me to understand the long term trend of whether I should be making more blue jeans or black jeans yeah. next year. If I track a few seasons mm -hmm. of the sales, I can start seeing a curve of and yes. see whether it's the sales are going up and down and whether I need to be making more or making less. Is that exactly exactly that? For example, even. At my at my time at one of the department stores where I was in charge of the women's wear denim women's wear denim area, it was a case of breaking it down, not even looking at it at brand level, breaking it down by cut, by size, whether it was a skinny, whether it was a boyfriend jean, whether it was a straight fit, whether it was a bell bottom, whether it was a flare, look, breaking it down by size, then looking at what was almost the color. The, the, the color peaks across the year within within that period because you know that for example, from probably March, late March through to to August, you need to switch on your white jean because white jean it hits its peak in the summer, and then you start to tone it down as you come as you coming into the autumn, and then start to focus more on your your indigos, your greys, and your blues. So looking at how your full year curve looks, looking at where the peaks and troughs are, and then knowing how to kind of manage 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 that business and manage to make sure that you're getting that stock in in time to hit those peaks so that you're then then not chasing yourself and then left with a stock problem come the end of the year because I, I guess even i mean a lot of the people in the facebook group i mean this will be going on youtube as well but mm. in in our in our facebook group a lot of people quite early stage a few people a bit more established but yeah. people people early stage but i still think even with the little data that you have after you've been trading a little while if you're measuring it you can be proactively reacting off that data and, and and being efficient and and not run out of cash or have too much stock. Yeah, definitely. I for me, it's even the case of where I've where whenever I've had limited history, I look at the trend over the last three, four, twelve weeks, and look at what that is telling me. What's what's the aggregation within that? And then if we assume even as a even if it's been a tough trading period, if we assume that that is your baseline going forward. What, where can you see incremental wins? Because you'll see small little lessons learned within within the trends that you've seen previously. That if you nipped in the bud, maybe you maybe you've noticed that you've bought a full size range from twen from twenty eight all the way up to thirty eight. You may notice that in actual fact you're sat on your twenty eight and your and 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 your thirty eight, and those aren't working. Looking at a way of potentially clearing those through and then going forward dropping those sizes off completely because in actual fact you know that your sweet spot is in the middle based off of based off of what the the data is starting to tell you about your your customer base gotcha okay that make that makes that makes so much sense sam i think that's really really good advice um and how do you know we've talked about 
all the, I'm really interested in the fact that you spoke about colour as well because it's really interesting that we have it's not just about sales but you can cross reference all this different data to start getting really intelligent about this and that's mm -hmm. really I never realised how in depth it was to be honest um, are there tools that we can use that, that we can um, um, make this easier for our, ourselves doing the forecasting are there things that we can use out there on the marketplace to help us with this trend forecasting there are stock reporting systems that you can buy off the shelf, the likes of like uh, Board, but I uh, Board, which is a which is a good reporting system, which is almost like a Excel pivoting system that that pulls all the raw data from the back end of your back end back end of your website. There is a Look Looker, which is again another kind of web based reporting system that plug, which is a plug into the back, which can then run data for you. But more often than not, the way that I tend to look at it is just basically going through Excel and looking at, even if it's a simple tally chart of where your sales are coming from, you can start to build a picture of of where of where your sweet spots are and where are your where are your areas where are your areas of risk, whether that be in the fact that you have, you may have bought going back to your jeans and jean jean example for example a raft of colours through from red through to black red, green, yellow, black, white. You can start to see where your customer is le is, le is leaning to. And with and maybe what you might even notice within that is in actual fact, within the color, it may not be that the entire color is a bust if it's, it's trading low. You may even see that within the red, there may be a particular fit within that that's actually working. And it may not need a massive investment in terms of stock, but having that there still brings that customer through the door who then you may not, who maybe through your analytics, particularly if you're on e-commerce, can see that within their basket, if they're buying this, they're also buying this other item. So being able to pair those pair those items together within your within your overall trend or, or plan allows for a, a higher, a, a potentially higher AO, AOV or order value with order value and basket value going going through your tools so it's looking for those connections as well as looking at the data to support how you how you plan going forward and um, is google have you got uh, much experience of google trends because that's also a tool that a lot of people use in general uh for forecasting trends and i think you can just um for those of you who aren't aware of it you can use google trends um and you can type in like blue jeans or red jeans or green pants and you can see how much people how often people are searching for that online and it will give you a curve of whether those those searches are going up and down so that's mm -hmm. also another really good way if you don't have if you're early stage and you don't have any data available to you of seeing just what's happening in the wider market as well yeah and I think it's worth it's there's the, one of the key things that we're always encouraged to do is go out and regularly competitively shop and that's take away your consumer eye, go out there with a notepad and just jot down some gentle notes as to what are the key things that you're seeing out there in, in, in the high street, in the department stores and online, because that will, t that will start to give you a great, a wider sense of, of where, of where the, mar where the market is and, and allow you to kind of take a step back and further analyze how you can then grow and, and, and drive your business. And I guess a really sneaky way of doing that would, I suppose, would be to go around to shops and maybe see which of their sales rails are emptying out. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's always you know what's hot that way, right? The other stuff yeah. left on the shelf. There's low, you know, the other stuff. There's only a couple left. Then people must be loving this. So yeah. Exactly. For me, one of the key things, one of the key things that we always used to do was, particularly in sell time, is walk the floors because. What you then see on that, what you see that's still left on the sell rack, have you bought that going forward? Because if it hasn't worked previously, or have you got something similar? Because if it hasn't worked previously, the likelihood of it working going forward, if your customer profile hasn't changed massively, is slim to none. So it's about being aware of it and and knowing that one of the I think one of the key messages that I've learned is that forecasting the trend and bringing the stock in, the stock is yours until you ultimately clear it through and it's in the hands in the hands of a consumer until that point it's yours so you've got to make sure that you're looking at it you're looking at it 360 your full price proposition all the way through to markdown and looking at how how you're going to best manage that to drive it through based off of the 
either the analytics or what you're seeing in the wide in the wider market through Google, through Google Trends or just through what you're seeing out and about through magazines in the high street stores on on the pavement. That's that's, that's uh, such an in depth answer. I'm so glad we were having this session right now. I've I've actually got a question from someone in the group. I've got a question from Asma. Um, and I hope I've said your name right. Apologies if I haven't. Um, what future fashion trends are going to hit us? What's coming up? The big thing, the big thing that's on the horizon is is oversized fashion. You've got oversized fashion. I think the urban. I think the 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 the, the, the merge of luxury and urban is yet to go away. And that's not only almost like the terraces look that you see, particularly the likes of the sports brands going after, but you've got such a merge with the fact that if you look at how much the likes of the Balenciagas of this world and the Louis Vuittons of this world are going after that real athleisure look, and trying to merge that with merge that into their into their lux apparel, I think that's where where we're really really head, we're really headed. That contem- almost that contemporary feeling as if it's accessible because it's now everyday wear but it's subtly subtly bre- subtly branded so we're alongside about 500 1000 pound track suits is that-, that is that's it's it's not exactly those price points but what you've got is you'll always see that fil- you'll always see that filter down if you take a look for example at the fact that uh, long line long line t-shirts and oversized t-shirts are dominating not only the men's sphere but the women's sphere and then you go back if you go back 18 months ago that was the likes of rick owens in their in 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 their in their dark shadow collection was massively promoting that y3 was promoting it and that's kind of filtered down and then been adopted by adopted by other brands and i think that's that's one that's one way we're we're headed also the fact that you'll what you'll see is you'll start to see a large collection of unlikely collaborations between i think what you'll what would have been classically skater and urban brands with super lux with 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 super with super lux brands i think that trend is is set is set to continue as those brands look to tap into a whole new clientele gotcha so people like palace uh are going to be get, they're going to be like become like much bigger players do you think palace i think will be you've got the re- you've got the you've got supreme with their re- recent uh collaboration with louis vuitton and following their recent Further investment by a, a hedge fund, I see that growing, even growing, growing even even further. You've got the likes of there's uh, there's talks of Balenciaga potentially doing a, a further collaboration at the end of this year, and also the fact that what you'll see is these brands will also go off piste and do other collaborations with outside of the fashion sector. I.e., for example, this summer will be the first time that the first range of of off white and IKEA launching in IKEA stores globally this summer, which is which is you would have thought is unheard of, but I guarantee that that will be sold through so quickly you won't be able to get your hands on it. Yeah, like an IKEA collaboration. An IKEA collaboration with Off White. Wow, that's uh, that's uh, not something I ever thought I'd hear. To be honest, <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> it's, it's surprising. Even if you look at, even if you look back to last summer, where Balenciaga basically took an IKEA blue bag and put, put their logo all over it. That sold. That they couldn't keep that in stock. So it's it's going to be a lot of out of their out of their comfort zone collaborations i think will be will be really really key uh, do you think these do you think it, like limited edition is helping well you know this capsule kind of approach i think i think very much so. i think it's what it's what it's doing is it's cre- creating that buzz that buzz fair around it that media hype and therefore it gives them that spotlight which then allows them to shine and then direct that light wider onto their wider collection and and that that for me will def will definitely continue, particularly with the fact that you've you've got brands now that are literally allowing you to shop whilst their whilst their product is going down the catwalk at Paris and Milan. I think that will continue as well. And can just um, not everyone's aware of what ca- a capsule is. Do you do you mind explaining that, Sam? Yeah. So a capsule collection is where a brand may put together a piece. A, a piece, uh, a collection of clothing, which will probably be no more than about fifteen or twenty items, which will tell, which will, which will tell a story that will be 
uh, designed and sourced and produced in very limited, very limited quantities. And what they tend to do is they will give it to their marquee retailers and their flagship stores, so which then creates that buzz of people literally running around hunting for it. And once it's sold through, it's sold through. It won't return again. But if for, for if you're looking for examples, I would look at the Kanye APC APC collaboration that happened four years ago. Those items are still going on eBay now. A sweatshirt, a, a simple grey sweatshirt, is is retailing on eBay for about two two thousand pounds. Wow. You've got uh, what else have you got? You've got the recent Skepta and Nike Nike capsule collection that that, that came out, which was again which was again a massive a massive hit. You've got the recent Virgil Abloh and Nike collaboration where those trainers now are like gold dust. Uh, particularly the, the the Jordan one, which was then voted the sne- the sneaker of the year last year. Um, so I think capsule collections are a way of particularly drawing drawing that hype and drawing that focus for brands that may feel at times that they're being a, a little bit left behind. They can quickly jump back to the front of the queue. All right, th- thank you very much. That was a great explanation. Um, and. So do you think we can really identify trends? Like this is a, one of my questions, the pre-show questions I wrote down um, about, you know, some people say that we can't actually identify trends. We can only spot the ones that are happening already. So we can't, you know, they, they say we can't forecast them. It's impossible. Um, but what, do you, what would you say about that? I think you can do. And a lot of that is about going with, going, going with your gut. That there are wrong. What you'll always find is that there will always be early adopters. It's who is going to be first to market and keep and not just shirk at the first sign of particular risk, but keep headway strong on the fact that that is that that is the direction that fashion is going going to go down. I go back to the oversized T-shirt scenario that I, I presented earlier. Rick Owens was the first one to do it. They flew out and everybody thought it was it was simply just a Rick Owens thing. Then a year later, Ricardo Tisky did it with Givenchy, but then added the Rottweiler silhouette or the Shark silhouette. I know, for example, I know for example, Harvey Nichols did over a million pounds in in a season off the back of off the back of those T-shirts. So it's a case of knowing that there will be early adopters, but it will then hit the mainstream, and it's it's about keeping that persistence and at times following your gut. Brit, I and I 100% agree with that. Um, that decision making process that sometimes you do just have to go with your experience and your gut because that's kind of what our gut our gut is comes from our experience and ultimately that's you have to make a call sometimes and do you feel that that's about to happen um can we can we create trends for example i'm thinking of a kind of fake trend that was uh that was made, that was kind of inspired as a, as a joke really mm-hmm. which was normcore which mm-hmm. was a group of people decided to write a, a fake fashion trend report and say that basically in the future everyone's just going to be wearing really plain, mundane Homer Simpson type clothing, and then it actually took off as a trend. You know, then everyone was doing it, uh, so they kind of instigated this trend that wasn't that you know wasn't going to be. So, do you think that's something we can do? We can actually force trends to happen. I think you can force, you definitely can force trends to happen. It's a, it's about creating that momentum. If you can get the momentum behind it, then what will happen is that you will then, you'll then engage the early adopters. Once the early adopters get it, then you'll start to see on, on street style images. And then once you start to see on street style images, then you'll start to see the Instagram vloggers start to pin, pin their, their, their pins to it and then that will start to slowly that will start to filter down so i think it's more it's it's more than possible it's about uh, what you've got to do is own that first so that people know that you were the you were the person that instigated it so that when it does bl- blow that you're the one that you're the one that's known no no known for it ultimately you, you can take the example you can take the example of Nike with their Air Max bubble everybody thought an, a, an air bubble within a sneaker was never going to work what happens if it popped now look at it it's one of the, it's it's the cornerstone of the, it's the cornerstone of their business and now we have the the Nike Vapor Max which has an entire bubbled bub, bubbled undersole we would nobody would have nobody would have thought that 
20, 20 years ago that we, that we would be there. So it's a, it's about conviction and persistence. And now some people uh, wouldn't get, you know, wouldn't dream of buying a trainer without a bubble in it. So yeah, exactly, they've just changed. They've just changed the market. I just had another uh, question from uh, someone in the group. Um, are there any other tools that you can use for forecasting? I know we spoke about Google Trends um, and W um, GSM. GSM. Are there any other free sites or tools that you can recommend for early stage fashion brands? I would say it's one of the big things at the present moment is utilizing social media. You've got influencers there that are first to market on a on on a on a whole host of new trends. For me, what I always tend to do is I have multiple Pinterest boards that kind of speak to the aesthetic that I'm kind of looking at in my mind, and then looking to see right if is there are there gaps within within that aesthetic that aren't that are being aren't being served for for example there's a recent store that opened on Wardour Street if you want to take a look called Lestrange and they they cottoned on to the fact that chinos is a massive piece of of the of the menswear market and what they've gone and done is they've gone to their, their claim they've gone and designed and fabricated the 24 hour chino it is it it will last you throughout the day for for all occasions so it's looking for those gaps and being able to see that at times what what will be there is it's staring you right in the face but you've just got to look for the gap look for the gap within that there's a i can talk to, there's another i can't remember the name off the top of my head but there's a scandy brand that has now devised the perfect fitting t-shirt they literally measure you up as if you're going to Savile row for 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 a fitted suit and will make you a pack of six t-shirts for you because everyone knows the work the last the, the, the last thing you want is to get, is to go and buy a pack of t-shirts and then find out that it's it either doesn't fit you it's too big or or or, or you bought a pack of slim fit t-shirts when you don't really when you don't really when you don't really fit into them yeah, so it's being that. yeah no, being no, no, a, it's nice to have a perfect perfect fitting um t-shirt and i've heard that pinterest are, you know what some something i've heard as well is you can use pinterest as a forecasting tool as well because you can see what you can actually see what people are pinning lots of on yeah. Pinterest, and that's a good way of seeing what actually what's hot and what's trending as well exactly that is um that is um that for me is one of the, one of the, one of the biggest tools uh, buyers rely on that massively. They also rely on just their own gut instinct in terms of just going out to the w, their local WH Smiths and just creating mood boards of cutouts, printouts of images that they've seen, and that then they go away and start to work on sketches and then put that put that towards put that towards uh, developers and see and and see 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 where we can go. So again, it's it's just about. At times, stepping back from all of the noise that's going on, looking at what is what is out there. What are people looking at? What are people searching? What are they hunting for that that, that, that they're not finding? And then being able to take that opportunity and run with it. And you. And then, as we said earlier, if you're looking to start a trend, don't be don't be uh, made nervous at the first sign of risk. Go through with conviction because ultimately. It, the, those that are the persistent ones are the ones that that, that get that get the trends launched and, and running. Okay, well that yeah, I think that that's a that's a key thing in business anyway. It's just being persistent with what you're doing. If you believe in it and you think it's a really strong idea, then I think um, there is something to be said for for carrying through with it. Um, and I know we've we've spoken about. I suppose we've already spoken about. The kind of people who should be doing it. I mean, fashion fashion trend forecasting isn't just for established businesses; it's also yeah. for new early stage businesses yeah. as well. Um, have you got any other thoughts or thoughts about fashion trend for, forecasting you want to share with our early stage fashion brands? I'd say the key th the key the key thing for you the key thing for you is always just l looking out at what is there in the market, making sure that the, the making sure that when you are if you're procuring, if you're procuring uh, brands and procuring and procuring items from wholesalers, making sure that you're not duplicating or cannibalizing your business by offering the same kind of offer across multiple brands, and that also is when you're developing products as well, making sure that you don't, you're not, you're not kind of, you're not doing, you're not creating items that 
are going to cannibalize each other because they all kind of do this do 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 the same do the same job okay so I, yeah if i've already got like so, an an awesome leopard print uh dress right mm-hmm. in my collection that's doing really yeah. well why develop another one straight now right away exactly on something else right it, it, that's 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 exactly it. If you have a great black, if you have a great black jean that's working for you, and you and you've got the fit, and you've got repeat custom, and you're and you're continuously you're continuously selling selling it, to then go and develop and and this a similar product maybe in a lighter shade of uh, like a grey scale, then splitting your customer base, you're yeah. ultimately yeah, all you're, you're all your own market. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Ex- Exactly. Then, and ultimately, all you've done is invest in in netting out in the same in the same position. Gotcha. All right. I think that. Well, I think that's brilliant advice. Um, I think we've got. I think we've covered the questions in the group from today. So, is if people want to uh, work with you on fashion trend forecasting, or they want to get in contact with you, um, what's the, the 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 best the best thing to do next, Sam? Uh, best thing to do is to contact me on my uh, personal email, uh, which is at contact at that guy store dot com, um, where I will I'm more than happy to take any queries or questions or or or, or help out um, with any experience that I that, that I can provide and go for, go from there. Or if need be, I can drop in my uh, business my business phone number as well. That's into... right. Yeah, don't put your phone number on now. That. I mean, they can also find you via the link on the screen that that guy bonds dot com, right? Yeah, exactly. Go there and onto the website, uh, pop a query on the con- on the contact page, and then um, I will pick it up and come back to you. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight, Sam. That was really uh, inspiring. I definitely. Um, I definitely learned a lot and I'm sure uh, a lot of other people did I think that's really uh, really in-depth knowledge on tr- on fashion trend forecasting and uh, thank you for your time today thank you no worries at all thanks for watching this week's video if you enjoyed it please like this video and if you want to stay tuned with what we've got coming up then also subscribe to our channel and don't miss out on our next cool training video You are also very welcome to come and join us over at Fashion Brand Builders, our Facebook group. I'll see you all again soon. Thanks for watching.